Right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Pub in the Park. This is a beautiful day to be here, down at the fire pit. It's rather warm on here, I have to say. It's a little bit sweaty, but it's great for you guys watching. Um, look, I'm Adam Pennell, Shropshire Lad, and I'm your host for the weekend. Uh, so I'll be up here cooking stuff as we go along. So if you have any questions about anything you see, fire away. Not, hopefully not in the middle of the demo, but you know we're always here if you want to come and have a chat. Um, I'm here to introduce to you uh, one of my favourite chefs at the moment. Uh, I come across Aston here, 15 years old, just turned 15 last weekend, uh, a couple of years ago now. Um, when he basically, I'll let him tell you the story in a minute, but basically got bought a barbecue in the lockdown and now he's a bit of a sensation on Instagram and he's popping up everywhere doing demos and helping big chefs and he's just killing it. So massive welcome please for Aston Pridu. Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. You don't look nervous. Cool? Yeah, I'm cool. Good, good, good. Right, tell the lovely people what we're going to be cooking today. So I'm going to be making some lamb koftas, uh, some flatbreads and a baba ganache as well. Nice, brilliant. So what's the what's the inspiration of, of this dish? Why, why have you decided to cook this? Is this like the sort of thing you like to eat? Or Yeah, I love Middle Eastern food. Yeah? yeah. Brilliant, yeah, me too. Me too. So what flavours are we going to go? We, you're just going to start with this, these um, koftas? Yeah. yeah. So I've got some blitzed onion and 500 grams of lamb mint. I'm going with some herbs, which is parsley and mint. They're going with all my spices. So I've got in here sumac, salt, Aleppo, coriander, ginger, and uh, cinnamon as well. Nice, that sounds really good. Those, all those flavours work so well with lamb. It's quite strong flavour, isn't it? So they can take on they can take on spices like that, right? Yeah. Bags of bags of flavour, it looks great. So koftas, talk us through how you're gonna do your koftas. So I'm just literally gonna mix mix together everything. Then I'm just gonna I normally do it off the blade instead of on the blade, because it's pointless really, in my opinion. And it just leaves a big hole in the middle. And also you need to refrigerate it to for it to stick as well. So I'm just going to make them into kind of like sausage shape koftas like this. You know what, That's it. when he said the blade, you mean the skewers, right? Yeah. Leave them off the skewers. So hands up if you've ever had a kofta fall off a skewer. He's absolutely right. It's completely pointless. Why the hell do we put them on skewers? There's no point, right? And when you said you weren't going to do skewers, I was like, why have I never thought of that? I'm always struggling with like flat skewers, falls in the fire. I've actually been embarrassed, you know, on a demo where that's happened to me before. So. Good thinking. So what you, what's your weapon of choice then? Out of all these barbecues at the front, what are you going to cook the koftas on? Probably the Kamado Jen. Yeah. So you started working a little bit with them. Yeah. yeah? Which is amazing. So yeah, amazing. What do you, what, what, why have you chosen the Kamado Joe? What's good about it for this particular part, element of your dish? Because I'm going to be cooking it indirect and it's easier to do it with a deflect plate in until it reaches a high enough temperature to anger get here directly over the coals to get some colour on the outside as well. So you, when, we, when we bring these over in a minute, Aston's going to talk you through how this has been set up. But basically when we're talking about indirect cooking, it means that there's still heat in there, there's still the smoke coming out, but you've not got the fire directly under the food. So it's basically turned this into an oven. These are ceramic grills, so they hold the heat really, really well. You can run them for what, 12, 14 hours? Yeah. With, in one, on one basket of coal. So they're really, really efficient, but they're great also for steaks. You can raise the temperature, you know, and, and sear on them, you can do all sorts. So, I guess when that landed on the, uh, the doorstep, you were pretty chuffed. Oh, yeah, definitely. It was yeah. amazing. I don't see you're recycling because you're getting an awful lot of stuff <laughs> sent through, aren't you? Which is amazing yeah. to see. There's so many brands that are uh, supporting what you're doing, you know, uh, and his passion really, really shows, you know. Um, we, uh, we talk a lot, and, you know, he's asking me questions sometimes that I can't even answer. <laughs> I'm thinking, what's he even thought of? How's he thought of that? It's incredible. They're looking really good. You ready to go on? Yeah. Excellent. So can you just talk us through how you've set this up then? So on this side, I've got a deflect plate which stops the direct flames coming up. Uh, so I'm gonna put it on now. So yeah, so we've got a, like a half moon. Can you see these on the floor? I'll try and show you one. You know, everything with these Commander Joes comes in halves. So there's a half on one side and then, so that's the indirect side, and then the other side 
we've got not this isn't there. So he can move, so he's kind of cooking them in like in an oven with the smoke, and then just to finish when he says he's gonna move it across, move it over onto the, the side without the deflector blade to get the char in it to finish. So you don't end up with burnt a burnt outside and a raw middle. Is that right? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Glad that you didn't just say no, that's not at all what I'm doing. Right, so what are we doing now? So I'm just gonna be making up a baba ganoush now. So these aubergines are then directly over the flames to get a charred outside and to a soft and middle. So I cut it lengthways and scrape out the flesh. See, I, saw, I noticed another little thing he's done there, which I think is genius, and I wouldn't have thought to do it, but after he's cooked them in the coals, you left them under the bowl to sweat, yeah? yeah? And that kind of, is that, so they continue to steam? Yes. Like, yeah, and the skin comes away more easily? Yeah. See, that's really easily coming away there. It's great. It was actually a year, about a year ago today, well, no, like last, last weekend it would have been a year ago we met, right? Yeah. Wasn't it your birthday when you came? Aston came to help me do a tasting menu. Um, it was a year ago, and I think, was that when you got, I gave you Josh Katz's book? Yeah. Is there any inspiration from that here? There's a, yeah, there's a, there's a lot yeah. of inspiration from that. Yeah, it's a, I've noticed he cooked a lot of Middle Eastern food. It's a, he's a great, I don't know if anybody knows Josh Katz or heard of him, he's got Berber and Q in London. Fantastic barbecue restaurant, really inspirational, loads of vegetables. And it's great to see Aston taking the vegetable the elements of the, you know, the, what, what he does so much as well, because they really do, you, trans, you know, fire and, and smoke and barbecues in general really will really transform your vegetables, but people don't necessarily think to do it. If you work ahead, like he has, so you, you know, he's had it's, uh, these aubergines cooking away now for, how long do they take? About 20 minutes. Yeah, is that what it was? Yeah. And you did, what, what did you cook those on? The kadai over there to get an extra smoky flavor. So in the fire? Yeah. Yeah? So the difference between sort of, obviously in here you can see some smokes coming out, that's because we've added a wood, ch a wood, a wood chunk to the coals, and that's creating the smoke and creating the flavor. The beautiful thing about cooking on the kadai, like uh, Asa just said, is that we've got wood, we're cooking with wood, so the flavor's already there. You know, it, when you're cooking things like vegetables, it really, really makes a big difference. If you just cook cooking over charcoal, it really is just a heat source. You only get smoke from charcoal once you get fat dripping onto it, or when it's lighting, because most of it's already been cooked out in the process of making the charcoal, so it's carbon. So the wood, there's a massive difference between wood and charcoal when it comes to flavor. All right, so you've chopped your aubergines. Yep, and now I'm gonna put it in, and I'm now gonna, I've roasted this bulb of garlic, so I'm gonna take off the foil and squeeze it in. So comfy garlic. Yeah. Very nice. So we just wrapped that up, didn't we, and put it into Gosney the Gosney oven there, uh, the pizza oven, just on the edge of the oven in the foil. And it's, see how he's just squeezing it out? That's it. Can you just pop it onto the board yeah. so you can see what's going on? That's it. So just squeezing the garlic out. So it's cooked out, it completely changes the flavour, and you haven't got to mess around peeling it, which is the most important thing for me. It's looking great. What's next? Wash your hands. Yeah. <laughs> so now I'm gonna add in, gonna add in some tahini. Some tahini? Yes. Yeah. Nice, which is sesame seed paste, yeah? Yeah. Use loads of Middle Eastern cooking. So going for about two to three uh, spoonfuls of it. And I'm going to drizzle in some olive oil. So this is almost going to be like the sauce, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah? That's really nice. It's going to be like the base of the flatbread. Okay, lovely. And Aston's has been making his own flatbreads at the back, which we're going to cook in a minute. So freshly cooked flatbreads in the, in the, the Gosney in a minute. Do you want me to jump on cooking those for you now? Or, yeah, okay. Or you're a bit, uh, is it a bit early? Yeah, uh, yeah you, could get, you could get them on soon. Yeah, I'll wait a minute. Yeah. You give me the nod. Okay, that barbecue ganache is looking great. I'm just going to add in some lemon juice as well. So much more healthy to make a sauce like this than to you just use a shop-bought mayonnaise or, you know, even chopboard hummus is full of lots of nasty stuff, but that looks like it's really good for you and delicious. Is that whole lemon? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so plenty of acidity as well. That's going to really cut through that meat. Do you want me to have a little look in here? So yes, please. Yeah. So just pop the uh, lid open. 
You can see it's already taking on some colour from that smoke and it'll be cooking through. I'm just going to probe it for you now. It's really, really important that you, pro you have a, a probe when you cook it, cooking a barbecue. It's really difficult to tell when things are cooked. Um, you can't really go by time. Um, so a temperature gauge, you always make sure, first you don't make anybody sick, but also you get the right results. So if you're cooking a steak, you actually take it off at the point where you want it. Ask them what temperature are you wanting these to be before you uh, switch them across? Probably about, we'll get them up to about 60. Yeah. Then I'm going to get some colour on them and take it to about 60 to 70. Lovely, so they should be just cooked inside. Yeah. Perfect. Well, they were about 40 now, so you're not a million miles away. There's not so much colour on them either, so you might want to finish them a little bit more on that side. Just, oh, yeah. Okay. Just feed it back to you if you can't see. I know you would know. Okay, so what we got next? So, I just put it, I just tasted it and seasoned it a bit. I put in a bit more lemon juice, a bit of salt. Yeah. Really, really important to taste as yeah. you go, isn't it? Yeah? Well done. Okay, what we on now? Always tasting it again? Yeah, that's right. You approve? I'm happy with that. <laughs> Excellent. So, how is like this uh, this kind of new thing that's happened to you? I guess in the last few years, how, like, what do people like think when they, you know, what do they, like, your teachers say or friends at school? Or... They're really supportive of it. Yeah. So, um, they also when I go to do these festivals, I have to take some time off school, but they always put it down for extra curriculum so I don't lose my attendance. Because yeah. Oh, brilliant. So they really are supportive. Yeah, really supportive. And then you got a lot of a lot of people following you from. Uh, from um, school and Yo, teachers yeah. and stuff, yeah? Yeah. Brilliant. If you want to follow Aston, by the way, I forgot to actually say, he's known as Smoking Maple Meats, okay? And that's because you live on Maple Street, is that right? Yeah, Maple Walk. Yeah? Don't go looking for him, I'm not going to tell you where in the country. You can probably tell by his accent. <laughs> yeah, looking good. Yeah? So what else have we got up here? So, I've made some sumac onions is literally just sumac here which is quite zingy um salt pepper some more lemon juice as well and olive oil and yeah it's kind of it's a berry isn't it it's yeah. almost like a different element of acidity yeah. to the lemon it's really really tasty very very middle eastern so have we got anything else we need to do we're just waiting on these just waiting on these Brilliant. Really. so should we get these flat yeah let's cook yeah just hold my microphone for a second. If I need to speak, you can put it to me. Yeah, okay. okay. So on these flatbreads, I'm going to be... The way I'm going to make them, I'm going to take the flatbread once it's been cooked in the Gosney Dome, and I'm going to put the baba ganache down. But I'm going to slice up the koftas, and I'll put them on there. I'm going to, then I'm going to also put on some pomegranate seeds, some parsley, and this it's like a fermented chili hot sauce which i'm gonna which i stole from someone else's um demo <laughs> which is gonna be a, i'm gonna season a uh, garnish out with all of that and then also top it with the sumac onions i made this is a gosney oven so you can run it on fuel like wood fuel or gas um, and you should cook this bread in about 60 seconds. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty quick. I'm just gonna have to move a bit of the fuel out of the way before I burn it. Incredible bit of kit. So I'm just gonna take these cofters over to introduce it to some flame now. Uh, where do you want to put these uh, where do you want to put, put these flatbreads, Aston, when we're done? Just on the board? Uh, yes, please. Yeah. How's that look? How's Aston's very own dough? Just throwing that in. I'm that's, just helping him out, cooking amazing. it. Yeah, you made it. We're going to do second one as well so that you guys can get a taster. As those costas, co kofta's coming along. Uh, getting some nice colour on now.
What temperature are they saying? What have we got? Uh, 57. Oh, we're getting close? Yeah. Excellent, they look amazing. Really do. Everyone's got to love a kebab, right? Yeah, definitely, yeah. I love Middle Eastern food so much. I think after last night, I need a kebab, to be fair. It's probably my favourite type of food. It definitely is mine. So many flavours going on in there. You got some pomegranate to finish it as well, have you? Yeah. Fantastic. Right, I'm going to ratio. I reckon these flatbreads are going to be there maybe a minute before you. But it's all come together really nicely. It's all about timing, isn't it? Yeah. You know, um, I notice, you know, when I watch a lot of uh, the stuff on Aston's Instagram, sort of in the process, he's obviously clearly thinking about what to do when. It's really important to not start cooking these until he makes his baba ganoush, because you don't want to be waiting for that. You know, you wait, waiting for the, 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 the baba ganoush to be made whilst the, you know, when your koftas are done. So it's a perfect way around, isn't it? You just have to sort of think about it a little bit. Oh, he's getting close. I'll beat you. <laughs> <laughs> They're looking amazing. Really did uh, give the dough plenty of love. Really stretched it out and it was I'm making flatbreads later, and to be honest, this dough looks better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely bit of colour on there, though. You see, if you'd have, if you'd have cut these on um, on the, that side all the way, they'd probably be black by now, yeah. wouldn't they? Yeah. It's quite a fatty the lamb, which is great means. And if you cook it to, to temperature like Aston is, to sort of 70, that lamb obviously will be cooked through, but the fat isn't going to have rendered out, so it's going to be really, really juicy. really important to cook to temperature not to time make sure it is cooked but not overcooked absolutely yeah but people the amount of times um, I mean, if i got a quid for every time somebody came up to me and said how long is that going to take then it's like well depends on like today it's going to cook quicker than it did yesterday because the air temperature is warmer for starters yeah and then also the wind's hardly blowing but then i might forget to put some wood on for a bit so that's going to knock it back a little bit so it's just like you know when you're cooking over fire it's impossible to put a time on anything because there's so many different variables and that's why the temperature gauge is so important. And we're using you know, these two different types. We've got, this is a handheld that uh, Aston's been using here. So it's quick in and out, great for things like koftas, steaks, chicken wings, or you can buy leave-in uh, leave probes, leave in, in the meat, like big chunks of meat overnight or whatever, so you can kind of monitor what's going on. But the handheld's really useful, isn't it? It doesn't matter that these cocktails are starting to fall apart because it's going to be sliced anyway. So We're going to slice it up, yeah. yeah. We're not doing any of those poncy plates here, mate. This is fire cooking. <laughs> no foam, no tweezers. You guys hungry? Yeah? I tell you what, it smells, I don't know if you can smell it there, I think it's blowing towards me. It smells insane. I'm going to take some of these off now. Yeah, excellent. Like everyone's just, I can fit, hear the saliva hitting the floor. <laughs> I know I'm keen, I really want to taste this. So you're going to be hanging out here the rest of the weekend? Oh yeah. So what, you, be, what else you got planned? I'm going to be going over to the Komodo Joe stand. I'm going to be helping those guys out. So were you on there? You've been on there since Friday? Yeah. Yeah, or yesterday, sorry. So what, what have you been doing over there? What can people expect to see if they come and see you over there? So we're going to be showing you what's great about Komodo Joe. Show you giving out some uh, samples of the food that we're cooking on them. So what have you got? What's on the menu? There, um, were, there was a bit. There's a bit of controversy this morning, isn't there? Oh yeah, some someone stole our pork pot. <laughs> it's cooking overnight. It's gone. <laughs> someone nicked a whole shoulder of pork last night off the uh, off the Camado. Maybe someone who's had one or two many beers walked past and thought that smells good. But they all rolled in after a few few beers themselves last night, thinking, "Oh, we got this covered. There's a pork shoulder ready." 
Uh -uh. So now they're working double hard. So it's a good job Aston's here. He's going to be able to help. Extra pair of hands. Right then, we're plating up. Should we do one pretty one? Yeah. On here. Yeah. And then we'll do another one just to give out. Do the hand. There we go. Um, so we're going to slice through that now. That is beautiful. Perfectly cooked. Absolutely perfect. And the, the consistency is really good as well. Now, you notice that he didn't use any binding agent. You know, there's no egg, there's no, no um, breadcrumbs. That's really, you don't need to do that. Like, salt will do it, you know. Like, like he said before, if you'd have had time to put these in the fridge for a little bit, they would firm up even more. But salt will firm it up. You don't need to put all that extra stuff in. It's pure meat. It's amazing. I'll have to get some snaps, sorry. So, gonna take the baba ganache, not be skimpy with it. Yeah, don't be shy with it, it's amazing. Gonna take some of the kofta. Can you make me another one of these when these guys are gone? Oh, 100%. <laughs> I need it. Uh, sumac onions. Those sumac onions are really going to set that off a bit of acidity. Yeah. Great little flavour, that. Okay. And we're going to just take. Who is? I forgot to chop half. I'll quickly do that. It's alright. Got time. Just going to. It's a bit of parsley for a bit of colour. And it's also something that's used an awful lot. Oh my gosh. That looks incredible. Let's get it on a plate and show these people. Right, I'm going to turn that off. Ladies and gentlemen, Aston has just smashed the hell out of that. Look at this kebab. Show, put your hands up if you wouldn't eat that. Didn't think so. Looks incredible, right? So, all you need to do now is let people taste it. Yeah. Yeah? So, <laughs> massive round of applause, please, for Aston Froggy. <laughs> Smoking maple meats. Check him out. Right, let's go back in the room and get them chopped up. Thanks, guys.